Here we are. Hello. In Imaging USA with Lachlan, CEO of Focal. And we're going to be talking about some things that he has learned over his time working with hundreds of photographers now. It's a lot of photographers in a very short period. Starting off, so the biggest, uh, the biggest shift for me when we started talking and uh, I got my Focal website started was taking my pricing from private to public. Right. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that and how that's been working for people and just generally the, the, I guess, the mindset behind it? Yeah, definitely. I think like when a client wants to book you, they're looking for a certain set of information before they can make a purchasing decision. They want to know how much does it cost? Who are you? Do I, am I going to like you at my wedding? Um, and I feel like a lot of photographers can be really hesitant about giving away that information. And, you know, depending on who your customer is, that can work. But what I'm seeing now in the industry and just generally like culturally, people are moving more and more towards like wanting to self-serve and like get information for themselves and make their own like educated decisions. And a lot of the time I use this like car buying example. And maybe this is something if you're listening to this podcast, you reflect on. But, you know, if you're type, if you have the type of customer that when they're buying a car, they like to do all the research. They like to pretty much come into the dealership and know exactly what model they want, what trim they want, what options they want. And they're like, here's my check or here's like the financing options that I already picked out. Like those are the people that I think respond really, really well to seeing information on a website. And what we see from Focal's end is clients that are inquiring and saying like, like the other day I was, I was actually mentoring a photographer and he had an inquiry that was like, it was like for a $9,000 package. It was like a two day Indian wedding in the inquiry message. The couple was like, I want March 18th to the 19th of coverage because it's like two days or whatever. And here's the date. And literally in the message, they were like, how can we pay? Like, what is the next steps? How do we sign the contract and move forward? And I know that can be like a really uncomfortable thing for photographers, especially because I think most of the time, you know, you want to connect with your customers. Uh, yesterday at Caroline Tran's talk, we were talking, the whole subject was about automating your booking system, letting your website do the sales for you. And she actually asked all the photographers in the audience, what is your preferred mode of mode of like uh, communication and they all were like i love phone calls but do, do the clients love phone calls do your clients love phone calls that's a really interesting question that i think you need to think about as a photographer yeah um from my end also or at least what i've seen since making my pricing public has been how chill everyone is that kind of as you mentioned that that couple that wants to show up and have all the information they're ready to ready to buy they are so much more relaxed throughout the entire year leading up to the wedding. Like they don't really ask me any questions. They know what the thing is. I show up, I take the pictures and it's been, I would say my email box has, I'm going to say less than 50% of the typical communication that I would have um, on a regular wedding year. So it's been massively helpful for me, I think. That's great. And it was a bit of a push. Cause like, I was like, I don't know. I've never done this in our market and our, like where we live. I think very few, maybe like one or two people have it, mm -hmm. um, have their pricing public and then the rest is all private. It's the starting rate. And, um, so I don't know, it was, it was a bit of a, a bit of a step. I was like, I don't know, we'll see if it works. And then a year later, I'm happy to say that it did work out for me. Um, what are some of the other things that you've seen in terms of changes for photographers that have worked out really well? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is maybe just like learning to let go of certain aspects of your business. I know, like our customers that are coming to Focal, they're doing so specifically because they're willing to bring in somebody that can actually, you know, not just provide them a website, but provide like a lot of expertise and um, maybe even business experience beyond, you know, okay, here's a website, here's a tool for you. You know, we can actually provide some education and information about here's how to like think about your business from uh, standpoint where we really want to see you be successful. I love seeing photographers be successful. And like to use that example, I was talking about with that photographer who he got that $9,000 um, booking, you know, we we're going through a bunch of these bookings. And to me, I'm looking at these and I'm like, these are the hottest leads I've ever seen. Like <laughs> the focal system has never worked so good. It's literally people being like, yeah, I want your seven hour package. My wedding's like this day, you know, can't wait to work with you. Let us know what the next steps are like every single one. And I was asking him like how many of these he was booking. 
and he was booking most of them, but there was a couple that he was struggling with. And I was like, can you just walk me through like what your process is, you know, when you get that inquiry? And he was saying, well, it's like, I like to get them on a Zoom call and then I send them my price list again. And I was yeah. like, why? <laughs> Don't do that. You're like introducing more friction into the process. Like you have somebody that's like literally at the checkout page and they're ready to like pay you like $3,000 or $5,000 deposit. Ready yet, the photographer. You're not ready yet. <laughs> And I think like maybe as an industry too, or just like seeing things accelerate so much more quickly in that aspect. Um, I think I think COVID was a big part of that too. Like, oh, you can't meet people in person anymore. Um, I don't know, people are just busy and like they wanna get stuff done. And like when they're making a request on your website or they're looking at you, they're emotional, they love the photos, they wanna book you, don't get in their way. Just like let them do it. They yeah. wanna give you your money and that's actually like I mean, pretty much the whole reason I started Vocal. Yeah. It's so hard to give photographers money. We just want to give you money. I swear. <laughs> Your clients just want to give you money. Don't don't stop them. Make it easy and don't <laughs> jam them up with more, um, I guess, mathematics and pricing and numbers when the purchase is probably more on the emotional side than the actual technical. So yeah, if they're sold, let them be sold. Yeah. Um, when it comes to packages, what are, what are your thoughts on packages? I love packages. Packages just... Packages make everything so much easier. Don't make confusing packages. Like my my idea is that, you know, if you can make a package that somebody can look at that and understand exactly what they're getting, almost to the point where like, you know, for smaller sessions, say you're a family photographer, we even suggest like family photographers make a session that's like, here's my like studio family session. That one all has studio photos. Here's my like outdoor session at like the woodsy park. This, actually, Caroline was saying this. She was saying, like, in her talk, she hates moving. She hates having to travel. It, like, adds so much, like, thought process to her. She pretty much only wants to shoot at two locations now. Her studio and the woodsy park three minutes from her studio. <laughs> and so, you know, if I was in that situation, I would recommend, okay, make a woodsy park package with woodsy park photos and make a studio session with studio, studio photos. Then the client looks at the photos. They know exactly what they're getting. The lighting is going to be the same there. The location is going to be the same there. And it just takes out so much more of the you know, uncertainty. And the less uncertainty there is, the higher chance somebody's willing to just like put in the credit card and it check out. And there's nothing nicer than waking up in the morning and just like seeing a payment come through from you know, somebody that maybe you've only exchanged one email with or you only talked to like, or maybe you didn't even talk to at all. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I guess, wording and how you actually set your packages up, um, is there anything that you've seen that's been more successful overall? Yeah, I think this is an area that like a lot of photographers struggle for. And I'll, and I'll even drop a little bit of a spoiler here. Um, Focal is working a lot on AI integration. And the reason for that is I think, I think, I think if you're a photographer, if you're an artist, I, I experience this too. You get this like blank page effect where you're like, oh, I need to write this package description. But then there's just like a blank, empty text box. And you're like, oh, like, what do I tomorrow. write? Tomorrow. Sounds like tomorrow. tomorrow. Sounds like a tomorrow problem. <laughs> um, and and what we're working on is actually creating systems using AI that are going to pretty much do 80% of the package description writing for you. And the key there is having you write in a way that like speaks to the customer. Like, hey, if you're a busy couple that doesn't have, you know, time to be like taking, you know, Zoom meetings and stuff, this is a really easy package for you to book. It's a four hour elopement package. This is what it includes. And talking in that way is going to help your sort of language resonate with that customer. It's going to feel like you're a good fit for them. Yeah. And uh, I think in a lot of ways you can replace the in-person conversation if you talk genuinely through your website. Yeah. And then kind of going back to the point that you're, you're all, you're the photographer and you're not, you're not sold yet on the couple and you're trying to introduce things. Um, it's actually really, it, it has been a little bit of a challenge for me when the couple knows everything and they get in touch and I'm like, what do we even talk about? You know, everything, I guess, here's the booking, <laughs> like here's the request. Um, it has been something that's been challenging. So I've had to come up with an entirely new, um, I have just like templates built out or I used to, uh, that would be like, Hey, here's my pricing and everything. And I've had to kind of retool everything because now 
they just have all of the information and they're ready to book. So a lot of my talking points at meetings, like my meetings are now 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, Lindsay's, I think, are they used to be like an hour and a half. Because she'd have um, to go through all this information. Yeah. And I think that she also has a different uh, persona on the Internet. And she's like, people feel like if they've watched a bunch of her stories that they're her friend. And when they get on the phone with her, they want to talk about all kinds of other stuff, which is awesome and converts really, really well. Um, but her initial calls would be like between an hour and an hour and a half. And mine were maybe, I would say, 25 minutes. But mm. mine's come down from 25 to about 10. Yeah. Because we don't have much to talk about. It's like they're getting married typically at a venue that I'm very familiar with. I'm a preferred vendor there. They, I don't have any questions about the venue. It's like, what time is your ceremony? Cool. Yeah. And then I try to creep them a little bit on Instagram to see what they're into or if they've been traveling or whatever. Um, cause I feel like most of my couples at least are interested in travel. So that's like usually, a some sort of meeting, intersection meeting in there. The middle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, where are you going for your honeymoon? Have you thought of that yet? Yeah. And then they have, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I think in general too, like it just gets them excited about their wedding and that if they're, I feel like some couples have like a little tiny bit of dread for their wedding day. They're like, this is like so much planning and so much work. And there's an element of unknown and like, we just hope everything works out. And then the, the honeymoon, they're in full control of it. Like, we're going to Bora Bora. It's going to be amazing. Got flights booked, got the hotel booked. And it's like, awesome. Um, so yeah, I've just rechained everything pretty much for my for my initial calls. Um, let's talk about websites sure. a little bit. Um, what makes a good website for a photographer? That's a great question. I think like what the photographer thinks makes a good website doesn't necessarily translate to what makes a good website for the customer. And again, I think it all comes back to like really deeply understanding who your customers are, what their needs are, why they're booking you and, um, and just making it tailored to them and who they are as a person. Right. You know, if, if your couples are affluent, busy people, then they probably want a really, really convenient, uh, process for booking their weddings. If they're affluent, they're probably not too concerned about sending you a deposit for like $3,000. So again, like don't get in the way of them. Don't make your system get in the way of them. Don't introduce all these extra steps. And, um, and I think as far as websites go, again, it's like moving more towards people want information like instantaneously and, and people are becoming more and more like impatient and like if they can't get the information they want like immediately they'll just leave and they'll go find somewhere else where they can get the information or connect with somebody in a faster way which is weird i it's like how can i connect with you like super fast and get this like gratification of like or are we a good fit or not but that's really kind of what it comes down to i think if you want a website that sells for you there's there's a couple components one the the client needs to be able to connect with who you are like i can't count the number of photographer websites who, you know, we're working on somebody's site and their old site has nothing about them. There isn't a photo of them. doesn't say location. their location, <laughs> location, their name. And it's like, okay, that's a great start. Like, <laughs> how can we fix that? And you'll notice like on all the focal sites, you scroll down, there's just like a section about who you are as a photographer. And I think that's like a huge component. And the reason for that is at least the way I see photography booking is they're booking you half for you and then like half for the photos. And you are like a huge part of the experience. They're booking you so that they have a good time at their wedding so that they're comfortable when you're taking the photos. And then of course the photos are a result of that. So when you talk, when you ask like, what is makes a good website? It's just those two things. It's like great photos, which I know like all of you do an amazing job of. You guys are amazing photographers. You're so talented, but a lot of the time putting yourself out there is pretty uncomfortable. And I think that's generally what I see that's missing in a lot of photographers' websites. Yeah. And then um, to speak to my experience a little bit, it's also that they want to make sure that you're not going to be an embarrassment on the day, that you're like part of like kind of the same a social circle that they would kind of want to be a part of. Um, I feel like that's another big part. And it's like really weird to try to display stuff like that. And it feels a little gross being the person like I almost want like the AI help to be like, no, no, you. <laughs> you take care of this for me and I'll, I'll make my edits. Like I don't want to be the one actually typing all of this out. Um, so I'm, I'm interested where the future kind of goes. No, absolutely. I, I'm so fascinated at like the changes that are happening in the industry and seeing how the whole booking process has changed in the last 10 years, you know, like we, 
I think every photographer would say they would sit down for coffee with their wedding clients. Yep, and me. now like, you know, we're booking, you know, these $10,000 wedding packages almost autonomously through a website. And I think it's really cool, actually. I know it's uncomfortable, but I think it's really cool that clients can actually connect with you at that level because it's really good for them. Like they get to know you, they feel a lot of trust and, and feel comfortable like booking you because they can get to know you online. And, and I don't think there's anything like wrong with that actually uh, just makes it again, like an easier process for them. Yeah. Uh, I have one more question for you. Oh, how many promo videos do you see? Cause I tell everyone to make promotional videos for their business. Do people actually make them <laughs> or do they do just not exist? Cause it's, we have the tools. Everyone has the cameras. You can record a voice note on your phone and throw it through Adobe AI processing. I think in like the thousand photographers we've worked with, like, one person had a promo video one one person oh, you got to do it honestly i think it's like the the other thing so not only promo videos but i think video messaging like sending a video message like of yourself is a great way to stand out you know if somebody sends you an inquiry say hey like taylor i'm so excited i got your inquiry you know i would love to photograph your wedding and just like being able to connect with your face and your facial expressions is a great way to do that but yeah putting a video on your website Awesome idea. I think that's like number two for when we talk to photographers and they're like, oh yeah, on my to-do list, what website has been there for two years. <laughs> uh, wedding. My friend promised he'd shoot my wedding or my Hopefully, highlight, yeah. my film video and it'll come out. Via, I'm sure it's going to be done. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I've actually been pushing it since like 2011, I think. And Maybe we should just do this for people. OK, you get promo video, send us photos. All right, we if do you're interested. It. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, maybe comment. Put a comment in <laughs> if that's a thing. You can be a guinea pig. Yeah. And then we'll just take a few photos of you and we'll AI generate you saying the words. <laughs> Send us like a 45 minute or 45 second voicemail and we'll bobble copy head. your voice. Yeah. No problem. Here's your no problem. Video. We can do it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, any other words of tip or words of advice or tips to leave uh, photographers with? Honestly, I think. I just empathize so much with you guys. It's a very lonely business trying to wear like a kajillion different hats, do marketing, do business, still feed your, you know, creativity. Um, honestly, like the reason we do this, the reason Focal does this, we love helping photographers. And uh, if it's not from us, I just implore you to bring more people in to kind of support you in your business. So um, that's that's pretty much it. You can't do it alone yeah. <laughs> at all. You need a team. You need a sort of community around you. That's that's my advice. Amazing. Uh, where can people go to find out more about about Focal? Oh, you can go to bookfocal.com. It's pretty easy. You can come to any of our awesome not a conference events. Uh, you can look out for those. We've got Maui coming up uh, May 1st and 2nd. And we have we got uh, Las Vegas. We got a little Las Vegas this thing up, cooking this up. Will be up before then. <laughs> March fourth, uh, Las Vegas. We're doing a one day, not a conference. Yeah. Tease the AI again. Tease the AI again. <laughs> Imagine generating a photography website that sells all for you in under ten seconds. That's a pretty good hook. <laughs> Unbutton, drag some images, Surprise. generate. There you I'm go. honestly excited for it. It removes all the barrier of. I don't know. I. Again, like blank page syndrome, you sit down, how do you make a website? Even having somebody custom build a website for you still will take time. It's not going to be as instant as this will be. So I think that's the other thing. Like I like so many photographers we see, they're like, oh, yeah, I built this website five years ago. And then I I guess I should have up updated it, but we can just build a new one now. <laughs> like, And like the thing is, um, you know, it should be an ongoing process. You should you should make it part of your workflow that you know you're updating your website it's it's like literally the most important marketing tool in your business caroline was talking about this the other day like you've got you've got your instagram bio where many people might discover you you know you've got word of mouth and like where do all those places lead to well it's your website so it should be the most yeah. well set up for you to get money but they we want to give you money i i, I assure you why I started this business. I was like, hello, photographers, you're great. I need to give you money. And they were like, nah, we'll, <laughs> we'll make it extra work. Days. We'll make it extra work for you. <laughs> try, try again later. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm happy that all this exists and I'm excited for the year. Me too.